Hello and welcome back to another Saiken Reviews, this time Xenonauts 2, the pre-release version. This is a game review based on the closed beta of the version. I'll be going through the typical ins and outs of the game. Xenonauts, for those of you who do not know, is the spiritual successor of the original UFO Enemy Unknown 1990 classic title, the Xenonauts 1. Uh, framework was an open project where basically the original game with a little bit upgraded graphic had been developed. Then the community came together and the Kickstarter happened. That Kickstarter basically had the idea of improving some of the gameplay mechanics but sort of keeping the original gritty feel of the uh, UFO enemy unknown environment. And with that Xenonauts 2 was born. And since it, it is soon releasing I figured I'll give you an answer to the question, is Xenonauts 2 worth it? In order to make these reviews a little bit more objective, I figured I'll just go through a couple of repetitive categories that I could apply to all of the games to just really showcase what you will be getting into when you're playing the game. Let's start with lore and background, which for me always helps with the replayability of a game. That category uh, concludes anything around how well is the game structured, what uh, is being offered to the player, how well is everything being put together. Xenonauts here does a decent job in successfully uh, creating a world that uh, overall seems to be quite realistic. The interaction with all of the other states, as well as the general interaction with aliens, uh, feels quote-unquote organic and the reaction of the different factions also influences your gameplay experience. Having the cleaners, for instance, is one of the counter organizations that you are fighting against really makes sense as the aliens prepare their full-fledged invasion. Where the game falls short is mainly on their, their attempt to create something more than just the normal storyline. While Sexcom has the ethereals, and whilst Phoenix Point really has a quite intriguing deep lore around why the world is now being ready to be reaped and how this is in a repeating circle, Xenonauts 2 doesn't really do much of that. Part of it is the charm of a 1990s game where you can suspend your disbelief, things are just the way that things are, but for a modern game I think it doesn't hold fully up to other AAA titles. Which neatly brings us to our section number two, which I will cluster as graphics, in-game graphics, as well as uh, the graphical user interface. So I'm split on this one here and I want to be honest why I am rating it with a 4 out of 10. It is obvious for everybody that is playing the game that the graphics themselves are not up to modern standards. There's no way to sugarcoat that and if you are a graphical person then this game is not for you. Full stop. There is uh, no way of going around that. The graphics are much better than in Xenonauts 1 but if you just look at the models you can see that these were done with hobby enthusiasts but not on the same level as an Unreal 5 engine uh, full shaded textured environment. And that is okay, not every game needs to fall under that uh, category, but I would uh, classify it very similar as Battle Brothers into a game that definitely f has its fan base. On the other hand, that also will need you to accept that uh, the in-game graphics are just not uh, fully fledged yet. On the other hand, the graphical user interface though, which brings us to the other side of uh, graphics and GUI, which is the graphical user interface. And I must say that really uh, has been working incredibly well in this game. So the overall score therefore is four out of 10 and not one or two out of 10. If you just look at uh, the precision, the concisiveness, and just the clarity of the graphical user interface. Just use hit chance here as an example. There is no hidden calculation. It is absolutely clear what you're supposed to do. Little uh, additional options like changing fire modes on the fly or repositioning and queuing commands as well as destructible terrain really are a great addition to the game. On top of it, blowing up aliens is a hell lot of fun, so that doesn't hurt either. Overall, 4 out of 10. 
which neatly brings us to the next category sound and FX those have been done very well for a game with a budget you can hear the individual click on every single button it sounds crisp the individual shots are decently done and the background music is not orchestral like but it gets the job done there are different moods that the game is trying to convey and whenever you're actually fighting against aliens it always gives you the a feel of an actual firefight the explosions could have been done a tiny bit better they come on relatively weak specifically the actual explosions not the flashbangs and the like i would also say that it would have not hurt to have voice actors for fully fledged out uh, voice and dialogue lines i will just put the dialogue lines into the sound of and effects because that really wasn't the best job ever so there's room for improvement partially goes into that category but partially also into the category of six out of ten on the uh, lore and background uh, category where they could have simply done a crisper job compared to triple a games this is above average but certainly not fully up there If you listen to the music, specifically the intro music, it is catchy. You can hear a lot of deep resonating sounds and it is well produced. However, the rest of the music inside of the game does not live up to that shark-like Jaws feeling that you're getting at the beginning of the game. Maybe it is just due to limited uh, production resources or simply because sound hasn't been their main concern. But yeah, overall, 7 out of 10 feels about right. Which nicely brings us to the fourth category of this review, the tactical gameplay or gameplay in general. The gameplay in uh, Xenonauts 2 is actually quite good. I would rate it 8 out of 10, so almost exceptional in a way of a tactical game. The main reasons for this is the depth of the actual weapons that can be used. I like the different fire modes, I like the different mechanics of how the weapons work. I definitely like the interaction of the soldiers and how it feels to fight with them. And I like the display of the battlefield. The clarity of uh, display of uh, hit chances from my perspective is a bar second to none. I haven't seen it that well presented in any other game. Just the full formula is laid out for you so that you can understand and appreciate where it's coming from. The visual indicators are actually quite good. Uh, there is slight improvement uh, on wh where you could walk in order to get a free shot. But generally speaking, the game actually does a really good job in telling you what it uh, can and cannot do for you. Bam! There you go. One more down. Back to the topic at hand. When we're looking at the tactical gameplay, there are, however, options that, of, uh, that still could be improved. Room for improvement, for instance. One of the things uh, that irked me the most is taking full cover. So, half cover definitely works and you can hide behind bushes and can take shots. But I kid you not, the number of times where I had full cover and where I was just grunting and dissatisfied with the amount of cover is beyond countability. So whilst every day we fight or other games like XCOM allow you to have full cover and then essentially uh, have the option to go left and right by leaning left and right, this game just strictly does not do that. It is a resemblance of XCOM uh, of U UFO enemy unknown actually where that was not possible and it's just completely driving me insane. So that is one of the few things in combat that I don't like. A couple of the other mechanics like panic chains and so on are maybe not everybody's taste. They were a big thing in the 90s so it might not be your cup of tea when you're playing the game. But just the core idea of combat, uh, hit points, armor that works very well, bleeding uh, that can be stopped but you cannot be fully recovered and just very much uh, 
not immortal soldiers was very appealing when I played the game. So from a tactical depth perspective, and that is very important for me for any form of tactical games, this game offers a lot because you can actually influence the combat and there is not a single gameplay loop where you're just using shotguns and rushing up the enemy. A well diverse team with an array of weapons will beat a specialized team any day of the week, which I personally found very good. So 8 out of, eight out of 10. Which finally brings us to replayability, the last section of my review. This concludes any, any replayability options. How likely am I going to replay the game once I'm through with it or just fire up a new campaign if I'm bored? Well, the game does an above average job with that. I would even say a good job. There is enough depth in randomization of the map so far that I would continue to be interested. Although some of the mission types, at least in the early alpha, were quite limited. I am assuming that that will change with the release, which is why I'm giving it a 7 out of 10 and not a 5 out of 10, because some of the missions in the alpha are simply very similar. You only get a different layout of enemies, but from what I can tell, as far as you progress a little bit further in the game, it's actually quite uh, random. So they just wanted to have a bit of a standard starting array of uh, missions for the people that are testing the game which I fully understand so that's good replayability other than that due to the RNG nature and just different loadouts that you can try I think it is well worth um, trying it over and over the game definitely has a robust framework and if they allow for modding and additional weapons I could see that you can even put a bit more complexity in it maybe even play a very specialized Xeno Nord faction that maybe just uses certain weapons or limits themselves in other ways. So generally the game is fine, which brings us to the final verdict and a word towards the rating in general. So that leads to a final verdict of 6.5 out of 10, which is a good game. And that is how I would rate Xenonauts Alpha at the moment. Typically after the Alpha, when the games are being released, you can add half a point or a point uh, worth of a rating just because the bugs and the game itself will be improved is going to be a game defining or genre defining game potentially not but is it worth your money in my opinion yes just to put some context to the ratings out there as well i'm personally uh, holding a deep grudge against game reviews that always put most of the games in the seven eight nine out of ten category was completely unrealistic in my perspective it is a normal bell curve where the majority of all games will be a 5 out of 10. And then the further you go into both uh, directions, the rarer that is. A 10 out of 10 is a genre-defining game. A Diablo 2, a Warcraft 3, a World of Warcraft, a Starcraft, uh, an XCOM 2, maybe something along those lines, a Counter-Strike. Games that are clearly above and beyond, head and shoulders above other games of the same genre. This game uh, potentially is not in that category. I couldn't give it an 8 or a 9, which would be really great games in the tactical uh, genre, such as Battletech, uh, for instance, um, or other really, really strong titles. But it is also not a bad game. I think the substance behind the game is absolutely fantastic. The game will always struggle with a little bit less appealing graphical output um, that is fine that is just the nature of the game at the moment but the core of a very down-to-earth uh, defensive game where you're fighting against uh, aliens definitely makes sense could the game have benefited from going a little bit more into the sci-fi genre and uh, leaning into that absolutely it uh, would not have hurt to give soldiers a few more special abilities just to make it a bit rounder as a game. Would it have uh, benefited from just having a broader variety of weapons? Absolutely as well. Generally both of those would be appealing. Could 
some of the mechanics be fixed, i.e. how armor works and how the time units uh, work. Yes, all of that could be slightly improved, but generally speaking, the core of what you're getting is actually quite good. So, I hope that answers the question, is Xenonauts uh, 2 worth it? In my opinion, yes, with the asterisk, if you can look over the clearly not on par graphic, but if you're willing to give it a try, I'm pretty sure it is worth your time and money. Thanks for watching and enjoy the battlefields, Commander. Bye-bye.